share with my classroom. I'm an eighth grade teacher. I normally teach science. As you can tell, I'm not really an artist. Um, but I wanted to share this technique with my kids, um, my homeroom, and have them create their own pictures um, that they could use to decorate their house for Christmas or to share with their moms as a gift. Um, just different ideas for them. Um, I like this technique that I'm about to show you because it creates a watercolor picture with vibrant colors. It's better than just using the water paint or watercolor paint. Um, and it's also really clean. Um, takes everyday materials that you would have or could buy very cheaply and it doesn't create a huge mess which is really important. The well. materials you will need for this project include you'll need watercolor paper. You could use regular paper, however watercolor paper is better since it um, doesn't bubble up or wrinkle like regular paper does when you add water. You'll need watercolor paintbrushes, just cheap paintbrushes from the store, water, washable markers, a pencil, you'll want number two or lighter, and salt, a cup of water, and then a frame to um, display your artwork in when you are finished. The first step is to lightly draw in your picture. In this case, I'll be drawing a picture of a poinsettia. Because I want to frame this picture, I will first trace the back of a 5x7 frame so I know the boundaries of my picture. It's okay for your pencil lines to show up in your painting. However, if you don't want to see the lines very well, then be sure to draw lightly. I am not very good at drawing without an example, so I find it useful to find a picture and imitate it in your drawing. Poinsettias make a nice drawing because their petals are very randomly placed, they're simple and fat, and they stack on top of each other. This makes it a very easy flower to draw. The leaves are similarly shaped to the petals, but they stick out smaller behind the petals. After you have drawn your picture, you will want to use your washable markers to shade in your picture. For my poinsettia, I'm going to use a basic color palette. I'm going to use a basic red for the petals, yellow for the center of the flower, and green for the leaves. I will later add a blue background. You want to leave the background until after the picture has come close to drying. This will prevent the background colors from leaching into the picture colors. Notice that I don't color in every inch of the petals. The water will spread the marker out so you can't see, see the marker lines or the white space. You also want to add some dimension to the flower through shading. Notice that I color the inside of the petal and then light Lighten the marker amount as I near the outside edge. You could also add shading with another marker color. If you want to mix colors, it's a good idea to have a test sheet of watercolor paper before you add colors to your picture.
Next, you want to simply add water to your painting using a watercolor paintbrush. You want to start with the lightest color on your painting and brush towards the darker sections. So in my painting, I started with the yellow center. I'll move on to the red petals, and then last I will do the green leaves. If you start with the green leaves or the darker colors, it's hard to keep the darker colors from intruding on the lighter colors. It's okay if you get some bleeding of one color into the other. That is part of water coloring. As you add water, you will periodically want to add salt to your painting. The salt pulls some of the color, adding a speckling to the painting. Once you are finished with the painting of the picture, you will want to wait a while to add the background. After your painting has dried and you've brushed your salt off, you are ready for the last step, adding the background. To add the background, you will follow the same steps as you did for the picture. You'll want to think about shading, then add water and salt and allow it to dry. For the background, since it's a large area, you are coloring, make sure your marker lines go in the same direction. You will be able to tell if, if you just scribbled in different directions. Often because the background is darker, I end up having problems with leaching into the picture. You might find it helpful to have a paper towel handy to soak up any unwanted leaching. Finally, you'll choose a frame to display your artwork in and enjoy giving it as a